Hi, welcome to setting up location and responsibility centers in Dynamics Nav. Now, before we use locations in Microsoft Dynamics Nav, we should first create them. Let me show you how to do this. I'll use the search function and type in locations. Here you can see that Corona Canada is using colors to identify their locations. In your system, you might use geographical names based on my experience. But here you can see blue, green, and so on. Now, if I double click the blue warehouse and open the location card, I can see the address information, name, city, and so on. There's communication information that you can set up, such as phone number and fax number. And then you can also set up warehouse information. You can also enable locations for warehouse management, such as pick put away using bins and so on. But that's something that we'll have a look in another module. For the time being in this module, setting up location is only about entering a code, a name, and address information. I would like to note, if you have a physical warehouse, you should still create a location, even if you only have one physical warehouse, because suppose in the future you add a second warehouse. It's much easier if you already defined your first location. You can also enter some parameters in the inventory setup. So if I search for inventory setup, you can see that the parameters such as outbound and inbound warehouse handling time, which are also parameters that you can set up by location. You would do this when you don't use locations. Then another important thing you can also do in the inventory setup is by making location mandatory. So if I select this field, we will have to use location. As you can see, creating location in Dynamics Nav is quite simple. In order to be able to know which master data we should assign which location, it's important, first of all, to have a look at our distribution strategy. Do we have a centralized or a decentralized strategy? A centralized strategy would mean that we have all our vendors deliver products to the central warehouse. And then once we have the items in our central warehouse, we'll use the transfer orders to deliver to the local warehouses. Or a decentralized strategy, that would be the opposite, where your vendor delivered products to different warehouses. There's a big difference between these two strategies, and that's why it's important to look at how do we want to set up our locations. Let's look at how we can set up a centralized warehouse setup. What we first need to do is define my default, and that's something you can do in the company information. So if I use the search function and look for company information, here I can enter a location code. You can choose what location will be your central warehouse. When you assign a location code in the company information, when there's no location signed to a customer, vendor, or responsibility center, the system will automatically use the code given. And in that way, for example, you can leave the location code field for most of your vendors blank, which would mean that they, that they will deliver centrally to the assigned location. So that's a very easy, but a very efficient way to set up centralized strategy in Dynamics Nav. So once we have locations, we can start linking them. In a typical decentralized strategy, you want to link your vendors to the location which they typically will deliver. And you can do the same with customers. And by doing this, you'll see that based on the location that you've assigned to a customer or a vendor, the system will retrieve that location on the sales and purchase line. Linking locations to vendors and customers is very easy to do. So if I were to go to customers, you can already see here by looking at the location field, which locations are linked to which customers. I'll open a customer card that doesn't have a location yet. And then in the shipping section, right here, I can, link a, I can link a location. For example, I'll link the red warehouse. Please remember that whatever location you decide to link to your customer, the system will always use that location by default. If you want to link something else, you'll have to change it manually. So that's important to realize. The same thing goes for a vendor card. So then if I search for my list of vendors, also here you can already see the different locations linked to the different vendors. And then if I open a vendor card, 
I could specify on the in the receiving section which location this vendor delivers. So for example, AR Day Property Management will deliver to the Yellow Warehouse. And remember to think about centralized and decentralized strategies. By adding locations, you're sort of implementing the decentralized strategy because if I'm really using a centralized strategy, the only thing you should do is assign the location code and the company information. So when we link locations to customers and vendors, we're implementing an account focus approach where the location is defined by the account, whether it's the customer account or the vendor account. However, in some cases, you might want to set up a user focused approach. And in order to achieve this, we can use responsibility centers. So besides locations, you can also create responsibility centers in NAV. However, they're completely different. So let's have a look at how we can compare locations with responsibility centers. So here you can see that locations are typically physical locations, while responsibility centers can be physical locations, but they don't have to be. Locations are typically used to store and handle items, while a responsibility center is typically used to limit user data. With locations, you can set up an account-focused approach, while with a responsibility center, we can set up a user-focused approach. So let me show you now in the system how we can create responsibility centers and how we, assign, how we will assign them in NAV. So first, I'll search for responsibility center using the search function. Here I can see that our demo company, Cronus, has two responsibility centers, Alcorn and London. So here you can see that the responsibility center is nothing more, nothing less than basic address information. You can see that Cronus has said that their Elkhorn Responsibility Center is linked to the blue location and that the contact that is assigned to the Responsibility Center is Aaron Nichols. His name will be printed on purchase orders and sales orders. Assigning Responsibility Center to users in an indirect way will define the location on a document. Let's have a look in the system of how we can link Responsibility Centers. There are three different places where we can link Responsibility Centers. And the first one you might have seen when I set up my central warehouse, and that's my company information. So if I go to my company information again, you can see here if I scroll down that not only can I assign a default location code, but I can also assign a default responsibility center. I'll show you how to link responsibility centers to users. If I go to the user setup, you can assign responsibility centers for sales, purchase, and service. This way I can link the information or I can limit the information that is shown to a user. So that's the second place where we can assign responsibility centers. And the third one, of course, is the customer and vendor. So if I go to a customer, you can already see here the responsibility center code. And I can start linking codes to the customers. You can do the same for vendors. So these are the three places to which we can link responsibility centers. The company information, then the user group, and then the customers and vendors. And that concludes location and responsibility centers and dynamics now. Thanks for watching.